Welcome back to another Old World Fanatics uh, faction review. This time we have our dwarves up, which obviously Andrew yep. plays a bit. I don't think you've played them in uh, Old World yet, but obviously you're a, no. you are a dwarf player. Our logo has yep. you as a dwarf, sort of. Yep. That's what I tried to do. <laughs> How you are generated. <laughs> uh, so long time dwarf player. Um, we're going to get a game in on them as well at some soon. So Very we soon. thought we might as well do another one of these faction reviews and pick one that Ooh. we sort of have a history with. Um, I have a long history of getting bashed up by dwarves um, from my other mate, Andrew, years ago in third, fourth and fifth edition. But yeah. uh, but anyway, not so much lately, but I guess, yeah, it's changed a bit, a bit I guess. It's because I'm uh, playing them. I'm, I'm, I'm no good. <laughs> nah, well, they've beaten me up as well. But I mean, uh, they tend to be, uh, yeah, everyone knows what dwarves are like, I guess. They tend to mostly be skewed one way and hopefully, I guess we're, we're going to find out mm. with Old World where that ends up. Or not. It's probably too early to know, I guess. Um, yep. Cool. So it's a bit of a weird one to go through because they technically have less some sense to go through because they don't have a heap of monsters and all this sort of stuff, but they've got a heap of bloody runes and stuff. So we thought we'd, um, well, we'll, we'll tax special rules, go through some of the runes we think are going to be applicable to talk about for characters and stuff. Um and then and then go into like characters and the composition and and then maybe when we hit units and and war machines we'll jump quickly over to the 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 banners or what are they called the standard runes and the engineering yep. runes just before we hit them just I think that it's hard to do one without the other I reckon otherwise you just you're not really getting the full full picture I think um, yeah, yeah. So if that sounds cool we'll do that um, so I'll bring up our our normal. Uh, PDF, um, you know, I bought enough copies, so here it is. Yep, here, yep, just yep, yep. make it a bit easier. The uh, cool, yes, the official um, official PDF. Well, I still have my uh, EPUBs in my inbox for ordering for Games Workshop, and they never worked it out. So they did refund me, so that's okay. Because um, I bought them when there was that mistake, and you could buy it through their website, but you're not supposed to. You're supposed to buy it through Black Library. <laughs> and I bought it oh, through yeah, their yeah. website, and it just broke. It just went to, a, just, I don't yeah. know, it's still sitting there saying pending. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> bloody hell, idiots. Uh, anyway, all good. They're all getting good. enough of my money. Uh, here we go. Where are we? That's so, better. <laughs> special rules. Uh, do you want to lead us off then, Andrew, with this? Yeah, yeah. So um, we'll start off with Deathblow. Um, so obviously this is going to be for your, your Slayer um, and Dragon Demon Slayer models, obviously. So uh, when a model with a special rule is reduced to zero wounds by an enemy attack during the combat phase, the unit may make uh, the attack. Uh, the unit that made the attack suffers a single strength three hit with AP one. Uh, note that if this model is reduced um, to zero wounds whilst engaged in a challenge, it is the model that makes the attack that suffers this hit rather than the unit. So, yeah, obviously... This is the one Slayer good thing. one. Yeah. yeah. So, obviously, for Dragon and Demon Slayers, it's not all that fantastic because you're only really coming back um, with your strength three hit, etc. But, um, yeah, if you have other models... You know, it's it is good to be able to attack back once you've died. Um, does this uh, does it, is this work with the slayers? I know we're jumping ahead, and people. I mean, people will know what we're talking about. Hopefully, like the slayers yeah. have that four up rule. That still applies here, wouldn't it? Um, I'd say yes. I do think, and I know a lot of people have said that this should really have some sort of FAQs as well. Oh, um, yeah, right. Just because, as well, like you can have runes and whatnot on weapons. Uh, I have seen all sorts of people come up with these different qua uh, crazy sort of equations of what what mm -hmm. would actually happen. Um, yeah, okay. but yeah, um, I would at least think that that would be applicable. Um, the four plus to wound, mm. um, not necessarily be able to attack back because um, it's almost like it's its own little special attack back um yeah yeah so at least it's, it's auto hitting though so like i don't know i don't know if it's a nerf or not but it feels like it's potentially slightly better if you do get your four up that you would have got and stuff at least for slayers yeah like, as you said not for not for the other guys but yeah yeah because it's it's not necessarily so it's just like when the model with this special rules reduces zero wounds um an enemy attack oh by an enemy attack the unit that made the attack suffers a single strength three hit so it's it's not necessarily it's saying that 
that Coming model is making slayer. an attack back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's Bit. it's implied, but it's sort of yeah. yeah. It's, okay, cool. Um, but yeah, it's I, I think that's a little bit TBA onto mm. again interpretation. Um, yeah. So dwarf crafted, this is great. Um, it's on pretty much all of the shooting, well, the majority of the shooting. So models with this special rule do not suffer the usual minus one to hit modifier when making a standard shoot charge reaction. So that, yeah, that's even more, you know, bang for your buck when you're, you've got a bit of a, mm. a bit more shooting. Um, and obviously it's going to be more effective when they're charging you and you've got your standard yeah, shoot. Yeah, you've got the combat res as well. So, mm. yeah. Heaps good. Like you, you, you're killing more on the way in, which then obviously exactly. yep. goes into your combat res. Yeah, That's yeah. Good. Dwarfs don't have the best ballistic skills, so yeah. I mean, take take what we can get. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the Grommel armor, uh, pretty good. Um, so yeah, model with this special rule may reroll any uh, rolls of a natural one when making armor save roll. Uh, so most of this is going to be on things with higher armor anyway. So a one's always going to be good because you're going to be having, you know, three yeah, ups. I'm guessing up. iron breakers and all that. Have these? Yeah. Have it yep. all. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, so the Grommel weapons, a hand weapon carried by a model with a special rule, has AP characteristic of minus one, which is fantastic. Um, the only problem is that uh, the special rule only applies to a single ordinary hand weapon. Um, if a model is using two hand weapons or any other sort of weapon, um, or if it's inscribed with runes, then it doesn't apply anymore. So it doesn't yeah, stack yeah, with right. yeah, anything else. Um, so it's only, yeah, just basically a natural hand weapon. But it's still pretty good. Yeah. I mean, take your APs where you can get them because they're obviously yeah, yeah a bit bit harder to come by. Um, Resolute, uh, this is the old stumpy legs rule coming in. Uh, so models with this spe that special rule suffer a minus one modifier to the result of flea rolls and pursuit rolls they make to a minimum of one um so yeah it just makes it a little bit harder remember to... that too with uh for because that's technically a flea roll isn't it so um when you're rolling that 2d6 take the highest is it whatever it is for falling back i'm guessing you would oh minus yeah, yeah that sorry, as well yeah, yeah. um because so, it's technically i think they said it's a flea, flea oh it move. is a flea yeah okay mm. there mm. you go um well that's if anything that might be a bit of a positive almost. yeah because you're not um, like getting pushed back as far potentially as far yeah, yeah correct mm. um so rune law um so this is how you're going to be getting your dispels uh so a model with a special rule may be nominated um to attempt a wizardly dispel as if it were a wizard um so obviously your anvils are going to be counted as a level three wizard your rune lords is a uh, level two and runesmiths as a level one um so this is really buffing up the anvil being a level three rune lords mm. i mean yeah it's sort of one of those things um as we all know the level three level four dispels are sort of where it's at when you're sort of coming yeah, down that's to the thing the... i'm a bit wondering about this and we'll probably get it on with characters whether or not the anvils are almost a must take because of that or not but i know you can buff certain things with runes yep. and dispel runes and stuff so maybe it's less of an issue but yeah i don't know yeah yeah and then obviously you know being able to only do one fated dispel at least having one of these gives you access to trial wizardly dispels um plus they're always going to usually be in the middle of combat so that that range you're not so worried about getting them into combat like your normal wizards yeah, where yeah. you're a bit uh <laughs> you know you got to be a bit careful where you stick stick your your frail sort of toughness three no armor wizards yeah, cool. yeah. Cool. um that's that's so, the actual special yep, rules, special rules. yeah so we'll um, get into the weapons um so yeah I'll, so just was there any change yeah just give us a run through of the runes and yeah sort of how yeah build i was just gonna go through the yeah yeah the same um same rules pretty much they've always had so there's the rule of right. three um which is basically you can't have any more of three runes per category of like per armor or per weapon etc um rune of form um so you know it's 
Yeah, it's no you brainer. Can't have but yeah. room on a hand weapon. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's no brainer. Rune of Pride. So this is a really good one. Um, can make things a little bit difficult at times trying to manage, but basically, <laughs> um, the no two items can have um, the same combination of runes. The problem with this is that also includes single runes. So you can't have the same cheap single rune yeah. on multiple characters. You've got to yeah. make it so the combination is going to be different for each item. Um, the rune of jealousy. Um, so each master rune can only be taken once per army. Uh, sort of probably, you know, the master runes are meant to be like, you know, these yeah. great relics. So obviously you, you wouldn't see too many of them sort of like getting around. Um, and the rule of duplication only rules runes that are marked with an asterisk can be duplicated on the same item. So you can get like strength runes that obviously yeah, keep stacking up. up yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. 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 So that's all that's pretty much I'm pretty sure that's pretty much identical it has been yeah. forever. Yeah, yeah. Maybe called things a little bit different, but yeah. And yes. then obviously some runes are noted as being single use. Um once they've used they're gone, at least for that game. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, so you can see with the weapon runes, we'll start off there. Um, so the good thing is that weapon runes can be inscribed upon a hand weapon or a great weapon. Um, so it doesn't necessarily just have to be a hand weapon. The fact you can be on a great weapon, yeah. you've already got those perks that, straight up. So didn't that change? Yeah. So um, there were additions where you'd have to put a rune on it to make it a great weapon. Yes, so straight right, away, okay. you're paying yep. for that, and obviously you've lost a rune allocation. Um, yep. So, yeah, it's it's really good that that's sort of now just embedded in. Um, and you'll see that taken a lot because great weapons are... Dwarves are usually going last anyway, and great weapons yeah, are usually... This, yeah, because yeah. there's no real use. Um, yeah, yeah, no, totally. You're always yep. <laughs> striking last most of the time. Yeah, yeah. most of the time, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll get into the rune of smiting. 75 points has taken a big chunk out of your rune allocation. Most rune allocations are only going to be 100 points for your lord style characters. Um, but yeah, the a weapon inscribed with the master rune of smiting gains multiple wounds d6 special rule. Um, so nothing to sneeze at. Um, mm. I, I don't even think we need to talk about that. I think it's costed well, 75 points. Yeah. Because um, is there one that you can do 150 or not? Am I getting that wrong? Isn't there? Well, we'll get there, I guess, but. So yeah, so 150. I didn't. I think it's one twenty. Maybe not. Maybe I'm getting. Ah, uh, maybe there's one twenty five. Maybe there's something like that. There was something that was above a hundred. I just can't remember. Top of my head. Yeah, yeah. So it's one twenty five for the Lord, and um, the drag uh, demon seeker can Demons. say take a yeah. hundred plus twenty five talisman. So a hundred a weapon plus twenty five talisman. Gotcha. Yeah. So you could see this on a Lord potentially then, because you're not. You're still oh, yeah. leaving 50 points to spend on some yep. other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, and you've still got two more runes if you really wanted to go for a really kick ass killy lord. Mm, killy. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, so again, but that's a master rune. So obviously you can only have this once. Uh, master rune of uh, Scarf Black Hammer. Uh, we're making a uh, roll to wound with this weapon scribe with the this master rune. A roll of two plus is always a success regardless of the target's toughness. So this is also quite good as well um, yeah. when you're taking on, you know, your monsters and whatnot. Um, you can put it on just a general, so it doesn't have to be on a great weapon, but obviously you're not getting your inbuilt um, armor piercing that your great weapon's yeah. going to give you. So that's kind yeah. of where the problem is there. Um, costed pretty well, I think. Uh, so Master Rune of Alec the Mad. So no, no armor save is permitted against any wound caused by a weapon inscribed with this. Warden regen saves can be taken as normal. I think this is pretty good. It's always been pretty good. Um, no armor saves. I mean, there's, you know, it's going to be obviously good against your knights and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Against dragons, possibly just to get rid of that armor save. Um, if you're going to be taking a great weapon, um, if you've got those two up dragons getting around, could be useful in that situation. 
Uh, so Master Rune of Dragon Slayings come in at 35 points when making a roll to wound against an enemy whose troop type is Behemoth with a weapon scribed with the Master Rune of Dragon Slaying. A roll of 2 plus is always a success regardless of the target's toughness. So similar to the Scarf Black Hammer, but obviously this is only against Behemoths. Again, it's a yep. Master Rune. Um so you can only have one of these better weapons, but it's only coming at. I do like that. It's so cheap, though, because then you're like, mm, yep. what else can I join this in? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Rune of Flight coming at 25 points. Hand weapon only. Once per turn during the shooting phase, a weapon inscribed with the Master Rune of Flight can be thrown with the following profile, which may be modified by additional runes. So you're going to get your other runes, obviously, stacking onto these special rules. So it's only a 12-inch range, um, strength as user, um, magical attacks. So move and shoot, so you can march and shoot, and quick shot um, is all really good. Um, so, yeah, it's not too bad for 25 points. It's only got 12-inch range, but so it's sort of, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> would it ever be... Uh, would you ever put this on an engineer, potentially, or not? Like, Because you still got to shoot, don't you? And he's got a bigger yeah. five then. I wonder if, I don't know. Then put some armor piercing on it. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Protect his war machines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that one, but I have seen mm. people take it. Uh, so Rune of Swiftness. Uh, so this is pretty good. So it's a Master mm. Rune of Swiftness, sorry. So um, you just got to be careful with these Master Runes because a lot of them are quite good, but you just can't stack them up. Yeah, um, look, oh, 25 points, I'll take two of them. Yeah, but no, can't yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can't combine this with the other Master Runes, etc. So the Welder of this weapon, scribe with the Master Rune of Swiftness, gains the First Strike special rule. Um, so First Strike's obviously really good. Um, uh, if if that's what you're sort of chasing, if you're trying to get yeah. rid of um, you know, that front rank before they get, um, get to you sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Master Rune of Breaking, uh, any magical weapons carried by an enemy model that suffers one or more unsaved wounds from this weapon inscribed with the Master Rune of Breaking is destroyed and cannot be used with the uh, for the remainder of the game. So this mm. is pretty cool. Um, I wish this was um, like any any magic yeah. item or something. Like that. that would have been bloody dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah. It's it's a weapon, so it's going to be quite situational, and you need to. Be I able feel to get like into that combat. There is a few obviously so. weapons running around that have been combined, obviously with magic and stuff, which makes like you yeah. know the monster slaying sword and you know whatever. Um, but I feel like a lot of the power of these big monsters and stuff are more around the survivability mm. and things. It'd be mm. cool if you could knock out some wards or something, but that's all cool. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're right. You see more defensive rather than offensive. Yeah. Um, so the rune of parrying. So this is where we're finally getting out of our blade. master rune. I want to get rid of that guy, but he's probably killed yeah, you yeah. before then, potentially. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <So> I don't... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, because yeah. you can't you can't combine with the master rune of swiftness, which uh, yeah. Yeah. unfortunate. <laughs> um, so yeah, rune of parrying. Um, I really like this because it's a defensive rune, but it's in your weapon slot. Um, yeah. So 35 points, so a little bit pricey, but I think it's worth it. So any model that um, directs its attacks against a model wearing a weapon inscribed with the rune of parrying during the combat phase suffers a minus one modifier to its rolls to hit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, I that's... mean, that's getting them into like five ups probably to hit all the time because you've got yeah. such good weapon skill. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and you can put these on your um, troll um like dragon slayers and whatnot mm, so yeah. it's going to make them more survivable because they're yeah they're not they're not squishy but not really having that much yeah they don't have boards and stuff that's the thing so like yeah if someone's yeah. getting more hits through um yeah you can get a talisman but source. that's that's it yeah exactly yeah. so rune of banishment um enemy models of the warp spawn special rule cannot make ward saves against hits caused by the weapon scrub with the rune of banishment this is that specialty starts getting a bit yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. if we saw the real old world where demons were in here, maybe, I don't know, I yeah. feel like some of these are going to be just because of the meta might not be that useful, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. I shouldn't say meta, the way they're pushing it. Saying, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're pushing it, Technically, yeah. there's no demon armies, so how much warp spawned is there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to, yeah, probably not going to see it a hell of a lot. Um, 
we're in a fury so this is one of the ones that you can duplicate um and multiply so for each rune of fury inscribed on a weapon you get plus one attack 25 points not too bad um if you're really chasing attacks for whatever reason this is your way yeah. to get it um so the grudge rune 20 points uh for each grudge rune inscribed on a weapon it's willed up may re-roll a single roll to hit of a mm. natural one <clears throat> made during the combat phase yeah oh, i don't like the single know. word there but anyway it is, is what it is i mean again <laughs> yeah. you have high weapon skills you might you know if you're only failing a couple but yeah just single and it's only a one i think that'd be the yeah. first one you drop but yeah yeah exactly Depends and then you can going for i guess <clears throat> duplicate it but i mean how many ones are you really gonna be rolling mm. well i mean <laughs> wait yeah i mean you might that's the thing you might if you're trying yeah, to really yeah. go for that one big hit with the d6 wounds you know that type of thing yeah yeah, every yeah chance yeah. to get every hit every through chance, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh so rune of might 20 points uh so this one's pretty cool um so just plus one to uh the strength characteristic um mm. so i think you're going to see that possibly just coming up usually you might have like one rune of fury or one of might yeah you know just that extra 20 point gap people um cleaving is another good one so each yeah, rune of cleaving cool. you get an extra ap 15 points it's another nice little one if you've got 15 points spare just throw one of them on rune of striking um look usually that higher weapon skill anyway but if you are able to get you know a seven go to an eight usually weapon skill mm. eight is going to be better than most things out there so you're going to be sort of yes. yeah possibly getting into that three to hit region um yeah again only 15 points so yeah it's, it's there's a lot that are actually pretty good in this little region of sort of that 15 20 points um rain of fire um yeah you might be seeing this a little bit with um quite a bit of undead getting around lately uh so obviously you gain the flaming attack special rule for 10 points um rune of speed it's only five points and you get plus one to your initiatives characteristic mm. so yeah, yeah, do you that's... think that's useful given that there is well we'll get to this but there's ways appear appearing there's ways to like disrupt units and go on yep. initiative a lot more but mm. you're but you're still low at initiative. So even if you go on initiative and no one gets their charge bonuses and stuff, you're probably still going last. Whereas yep. this, you know, stacking this a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. Might help that. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, Lord's probably coming in with, uh, I think, four. Yeah, initiative four. So, you know, mm. you can get up to initiative seven with a great weapon mm. if you really wanted to and you've only spent yeah. 15 points. Yeah. Um, yeah. For whatever reason. Uh, yeah interesting cool although sorry yeah no not a great weapon sorry because your great weapon's gonna be no, you're gonna get one yeah yeah I thought yeah yeah yeah, it, yeah. Um, yeah 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 um so your armor runes uh so this is the one that everybody's talking about the master rune of adamant uh so 100 points this is really maxing out your allowance of rune points here um, so mm. a model wearing armor inscribed with Master Rune of Adamant has a toughness characteristic of 10. So this rule can't be combined with any other armor runes, which does have some problems with it. So obviously, you know, you're looking at things like Killing Blow being a massive problem, um, Poison, things like that. But it, on the other flip side, obviously, you're going to have problems wounding even for a dragon with all these attacks um yeah so yeah it's i think you'll see it i don't know how effective it's going to be for its point cost but it, it will be effective definitely to some degree just did you see i saw i saw this being used but then i feel like there's other ways now to get up there in toughness anyway without using this so yeah that... That, well yeah. that's that was sort of one of the builds i was looking at without spoiling too much from our game coming ahead was yeah. possibly between this and other combinations to make you more defensive um yeah, but yeah this yeah. is definitely one of the choices that's that's up there but yeah like i said 100 yeah. points so the master rune of uh Gromwell, 45 points uh model wearing the rune inscribed with the uh it gets an armor value of two plus which can't be improved in any way it is kind of good um 
the annoying thing is, is like most of the time you've got armor inbuilt into your character, which yeah. is sort of already so you're paid really for. only jumping up one or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you so sort of, yeah. yeah. So you're sort of paying all these points for something that you sort of, yeah. It would have been nice, yeah, if you had just like a plus one that stacked sort of thing that you could sort of stack up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you wouldn't have to spend as much, possibly. So a rune of iron, um, a model wearing the armor inscribed with a rune of iron has a plus one wound mm, um, on his profile. That's yeah. not master either, but you can't stack it. Uh, but... Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I always like used to do that on my Tomb King in 6th edition. It was awesome. Just have five wounds, like, sit there and go, yeah. whatever it was, four wounds or what it was. And you're just like, man. Oh, no, he's got four wounds, so he went to five, whereas I think dwarves have four. Three wounds, the Lord, the standard, isn't it? Like old school? Yep. yep. Four attacks, yep. three wounds. Yeah, okay. It gets them up to four. Yeah, but still. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and they're pretty tanky, so I mean, every wound, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is the one you were talking about before. Uh, so the Rune of Fortitude, which can stack 30 points. Um, so for each Rune of Fortitude inscribed on their armor, a model has a plus one modifier to its toughness characteristic um, up to a maximum of 10. So you're tough five. I mean, even one mm. of these putting you at tough six, yeah. a lot of attacks aren't going to be coming in at strength seven. You know, you're going to be seeing a lot of strength six attacks mostly. Um, so, you know, you just, it's making for them, it's harder to wound. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I, mean, I mean, yeah, there's so many options here, but like, you know, you could do two of these maybe, and even on one of yeah. the rune of penetration, for, which we'll go into, like just stopping multiple wounds hitting you and stuff. So suddenly, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. every one of them, you know. Yeah, uh, exactly. So, so that's the next yeah, one that you just that alluded one, yeah. to. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is really nice. So, the rune of preservation. So, you're immune to both killing blow and multiple wounds. So, if you suffer an unsaved wound, from an attack, um, they're just worth a single wound, yeah. Instead of obviously the killing blow or multiple wounds, because there seems to be quite a bit with killing blow getting around, um, and especially for dwarves, you're going to be infantry, mm. so you're going to be really yep. susceptible to this. Mm, I keep thinking ahead. I'm jumping of like, oh, how can you do like? Because on one hand, you think of this and you go, oh, I want to put this on my my big lord Killy. He's going to take on the dragon, but the thing is, the dragon probably doesn't want to go into him, so. Can I put yeah, this on yeah. some faster flying smaller dude who can go into the guy with the yoga blade and go, well, I know you got an yoga blade, but yeah, what are you going to do to me? Like you have to do one yeah. wound at a time almost. At know? a time. Oh, the, yeah. the yoga blade has an AP too though, so it's got some oomph to it anyway. But yeah, yeah, it's just funny. <clears throat> yeah, but you might you might last two rounds instead of one. <laughs> mm. Yeah, <laughs> just a little exactly. bit longer. <laughs> So the rune of shielding. Um, so yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, so you can get a six up ward save against any wound suffered, and then for each additional rune, uh, rune of shielding, the ward saves improved by one. Um, so effectively, yeah, nice. uh, yeah. forty five points. You're getting a four up ward, but obviously yeah. you're only allowed three wounds. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a fine balancing act. Um, and the rune of yeah. stone, single use. Again, like you were saying before, single use is a bit meh. But I mean, if you've got five points to use, I'd rather them for uh, armor saves. I'm fine with them. And this is, I oh, know this is yeah. single, single use, not single per turn. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But single five points. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, as you were saying, a model may re-roll a single failed armor save roll. Mm. Mm. So yeah, that's all our armor and weapon runes. That could go on like the uh, Iron Breakers champ. Just to keep them alive longer. Who knows? Yeah, good. Definitely. Um, good. Cool. Okay. Well, let's jump into the army composition then. And as I said, we'll jump back to the other ones as we, um, we've already talked a little bit <laughs> as we go, as you do, yeah. about what you can put these things on. But it's just, they're just all melded together. It's so hard to do one without the other, I find, with dwarves. Yeah. It's probably yeah. the same no, with most armies, but I feel like because dwarves have such like buildability with the runes. Um, yeah. yeah, you start talking about a unit and you want to talk about the runes you can put on it. But when you talk about the runes, you want to talk about the units you can put it on. So Yeah, yeah, fun. 100%. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, so, yeah, like most armies out there, 50% of your points uh, can be spent on characters. Uh, so as with other most compositions out there, you've got zero to one of your king, 
Ample of Doom and Rune Lord. So your your Lord level characters per thousand points, which will be yep. giving you an allocation of two in most battles, depending on their point, points. Yeah. yeah, point formats. Um, and then obviously you can take as many Thanes, Runesmiths, uh, Demon Slayers, Dragon Slayers, and Dwarf Engineers as you want. Um, yep. So I'm surprised that the Demon Slayer actually wasn't mm. up in the zero to one. Um, so yeah, we'll get into that. Obviously, yeah, points wise, they're a little bit more expensive, but yeah, I would have thought that would have been up with the Lords. Um, so core twenty five percent must be spent on the following. Um, so dwarf warriors, quarrelers, and thunderers. So you can have zero to one units of rangers, which can be taken as a core choice. That is, is that fantastic. new from? Yeah, that's new, isn't it? Yeah, it? yeah, or not? Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah, so they were a special no. choice before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, special or rare? Well, I'm rare, even. Sure yeah, okay. Where they were, yeah. yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I've I've only take rangers a couple of times. Um, actually, uh, they're pretty good. I actually like them. Um, just depends on what sort of army you want to run. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. To put them into core is fantastic because um, it can just give you a lot more flexibility um, with your rare and special allowance. Yeah, and obviously yes. being able yeah. to minimize your other cores. Your core. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, so I feel this like is the quite... dwarf warriors might be uh, left behind a lot then in these uh, bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Although they are they are cheap and they do have mm, a few true. Um, things which we'll get into. Um, so if you have a your general as a king, you can take uh, zero to one units of long beards as a core choice, which is mm. really really good as well because most people take a unit of long beards. Um, There's a lot of the stock standard. Yeah, you know, tough slash bit killy um unit uh so special so obviously 50 percent so you can take as many uh long beards iron breakers miners slayers and gyrocopters gyrocopters there's your 18 yep. gyrocopters whatever they were talking yeah, about yeah there you go <laughs> um so you can have zero to one unit of hammerers per king or thane so usually you're going to have a bsb in there um so you can usually always take a unit of hammerers uh and then zero to three war machines per thousand points of the following so bolt throwers grudge throwers and cannons so there's yeah. not too much a restriction on any of those really yeah uh and then in your rare uh so 25 percent of your army may be spent on rangers um which you've already got in your core if you want to take additional rangers Iron Drakes is fantastic that they're not um, restricted because Iron Drakes, I think you're yeah. going to be seeing, yeah, yeah, a lot of them. So you, you can't only take zero to two units, you can take as many as you want. Um, and then Gyro Bombers, uh, and then zero to two War Machines per thousand points again. So it's not a huge restriction there of uh, Organ Guns and Flame Cannons. Uh, mercenaries won't get into too much, um, but yes, 20%. And allies. I still don't get mercenaries, man. I don't know. There's probably not time to talk about yeah. it. But I don't understand what it is like. Yeah, it's like sort of... what does that mean? What can you take? Because uh, it says in the rule book, it says it lists it in your army list, but it doesn't list what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit. I'm is it just coming down the track, or I don't know? Maybe some army lists have got it listed, but I haven't actually seen that, or well, maybe I haven't looked hard enough. But yeah. <laughs> um, allies so that's in the same boat you haven't seen a lot of people like for tournaments being able to take mm, allies. some are allowing it um i think brawler yeah. bash was allowing it which is we might go through some of their lists at some point um but yeah i think a lot of the other you know most of the tournaments i've seen pop up aren't allowing allies as usual which yeah i don't know i get but at some point it'd be nice to make sure yeah um, at least be able to take your stagnant own stagnant because we've only got yeah. nine fact core factions you know what i mean if you could take your own armies of infamy i reckon that'd yeah. be pretty cool um at yes. least because yeah. you, at least you're in the same race yeah as, yeah anyway. hopefully um, that, yeah that might change as more of them come out hopefully yeah yeah exactly yeah well that that might be the reason behind it at the moment because not everybody's yeah. got them but yeah um so yeah obviously uh Allies, so the Empire is standard, uh, Bretts are uneasy, and High Elves are suspicious. Uh, so BSB, a single Thane, maybe upgraded to BSB for 25 points. Um, in addition to their usual allowance of points to be spent on weapon, armor, and talismans, 
PSB can purchase standard runes with no point limits. So mm. I'm not going to have my PSB now with, you know, running around, being able to be sniped mm. so easy because you can take armor. You'll runes have 75 or whatever. or whatever normal runes and then just yeah. unlimited. Yeah. So you can get a yeah. master rune on there with two others. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's really good. And put him in a hammer unit and yep. never have to accept a challenge and then he never does. Yep. Is that right? So exactly. <laughs> that's that's what you do. <laughs> um, Fun. So we'll go into the lords. Uh, I take it. I mean, people can see the stats on the screen. We won't start going. Yeah, into stats, we don't need to. No, we don't. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. it's more pointing out maybe what's changed or what's interesting. I think. Um, yeah, exactly. Obviously, your leadership ten, which is expected mm. of dwarves, I'd imagine. Yeah, and even Thanes with a leadership nine, if you if you wanted to run a Thane general um, mm, or you know, whatnot. Yep, it's viable, um, yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. that's it. That um, there's always, always the case, there. was it? Not. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. Because they're always pretty high, eh? Just Yeah. Point. I think most people just took the... Oh, took Thanes were actually leadership 10 in 8th. Oh, were they? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Actually, I think that changed, though. I think they were nines or whatever in six, but we haven't played eight for so long. I can't remember. Yeah. Well, it seems like leadership's sort of definitely yeah, coming dipped down a little a bit. bit. Yeah. Yep. So maybe that's just part of that. But um, 60 points seems pretty cheap, eh? Yeah. Yeah, no, it does. Uh, but, yeah, you can see, like, even your ballistic skill with that throwing. I mean, you're only coming in at four. So, yeah, they're not... Yeah, that that's what I was wondering. Um, I was going to ask you about this. Is like a lot of them have the option for pistols and stuff. Is that ever something? Because uh, I always used to be able to take handguns, but I don't know if anyone ever really did with their ballistic skills. Like, is that just, do you reckon they just uh, got it there for the sake of it? Yeah, yeah, mainly. Like, you do see them every now and again, people making up points with these sorts of things, but I just forget. It's just a, more stuff to forget half the time. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah. <laughs> for me, anyway. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you got the uh, O stone and the shield bearers, which we'll hit in a sec. Um, so you may purchase weapon, armor, or talisman runes. So the king's got, as we said, one twenty-five. Thane's got seventy-five points. So the special yeah. rules: uh, you got your ancestral grudge, which is really good. We'll hit that in a sec. Dwarf crafted for um, range weapons: Grommel armor, Grommel weapons, which we hit before. Hatred only orcs and goblins, but that won't necessarily matter. For the ancestral yeah. grudge um to a certain extent uh magic resistance is really good minus one um rallying cry resolute and stubborn um so that's good but stubborn on a character won't make your unit stubborn so it's kind of yeah, not yeah. as good um so yeah. yeah yeah as as useful it would be lovely if you could just throw them in a unit warriors and that became stubborn but um, so Ancestral Grudge, uh, a model with a special rule, has a hatred enemy character special rule, meaning it hates all characters of the opposing army. Um, if this character joins a unit of Longbeards or Hammers, that unit will also gain this special rule. Should this character leave a unit of Longbeards and Hammers, they lose that special rule. So yeah, it's pretty good, although most of the time you'll probably find yourself in a challenge. Um, yeah. So it's usefulness for the, the remainder of the unit might not be as good, mm. unless there's multiple... Characters. It's good though, like when you get like, um, well, take my army. If I throw Tomb Guard into you and I've got like three characters in that unit yeah. or two characters, you know, like, yeah, heaps, heaps better chance you're just wiping them out. Yeah, good. yeah. Hatred's always, yeah, it's always good. Obviously, you need your um, Thane or Dwarf Lord in them, but you'd have the Thane in there for sure, like BSB or whatever. So, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so the Oath Stone um, challenge is issued by a character with an Oath Stone cannot be refused. In addition, a character with an Oath Stone and any unit they've joined automatically passes any panic test they're required to make but can't flee as a charge reaction. Um, yeah, right. So, yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, some ones in the past where you couldn't, like, they're actually, um, you couldn't get, like, disrupted and things like that. Um, it's not mm. quite as good as what it used to as be. As good, yeah. And when it says yeah. you can't refuse a challenge, you can't pick out the character. Again, you just got to challenge, and I have to accept with at least one person in my unit, basically. Yeah. If I can, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, Shield bearers, so this thing's, uh, yeah, pretty pretty bloody good. Um, so 60 points. Uh, you're still heavy infantry, so it's not changing your troop type. So you're still going to be able to be killing bloat, etc. 
Um, base size is 50 by 50, so you're taking up four infantry spots. Um, so you got Born a lot aloft. Uh, the guys got Grumble weapons, hatred, and resolute. Um, the guys actually pretty good. So weapon skill five, strength four, um, three attacks. So it's like you got three uh, long beards in there. Um, mm. But it's making your lord plus three wounds, so you can have a, a six wounded lord. Um, yeah. It's pretty cool. And the born aloft, uh, a model with shield bearers consists of not one but four models, the characters and three loyal retainers occupying a single place together, acting as a single entity. To represent this, the model with shield, shield bearers has a split profile and follows the split po- profile cavalry rule. Um, so I think that just uh it means you don't about the toughness and yeah and the yeah yeah Yeah. so it doesn't yeah i don't think all the special rules um, you're not really attacking the shield bearer and stuff yeah but then the shield bearers get to attack yeah with their weapon initiative strength weapon skill yeah so i mean the big question here is are we going to see a new one of these models uh i'd say yeah because the other one only had two two Mm. shield bearers and this one talks about three so yeah be good sneakily slightly implied in there <laughs> yeah um so yeah it's hit the anvil of doom um coming at 235 points so it's not the cheapest thing out there um but it is pretty good uh the guards it makes it pretty tough so you've got four wounds coming in your toughness five uh you got five attacks weapon skill six so by itself it's actually it's a bit of a tough nut to crack um yeah. so mm. i don't think you can send a no, unit you just can't of, send your fast cavern all that into it just yeah like, yeah or your fell yeah. bats might have a bit yeah. of a hard time taking this guy out so it's not it's not your typical war machine um and then like uh gum i was just talking about off screen before the uh the runes you can have 100 points of runes uh, mm. weapons armor and talismans as well if you want to make it even more beefy um we can't have rules... magic it off very well because it's mr3 plus it's immune yeah. to things like vile tide because you can't even hurt it it's tough seven um, yeah yeah <clears throat> you know you might even i was just thinking like would you ever push it up in toughness in order to stop you know bolt throwers hitting it that much and all that sort of stuff and suddenly yeah. they've, they've got to go in combat with it you know um, well yeah it's even got a like obviously a ward save which will hit in mm. a sec so yeah it's, it's pretty tough um so yeah you got the An- ancestral shield which will hit in a sec uh grommel armor grommel weapons so you're re-rolling your ones and you're getting ap hatred orcs and goblins so immune to psychs you're not you're not running anywhere um yeah magic resistance like you said minus three so and then this is obviously you've got your plus three to spell if you're going to be within range um so you're like a level three wizard for the spelling so it's going to make things even harder uh if, to take it out with magic uh resolute uh rune law uh skirmishes uh because it's a war machine so strike the runes which we'll see in a sec and unbreakable so you're just kind of sitting there um so yeah it's it's definitely a tough nut it's pretty good i think as a an immobile caster that sort of gives you you know it's it's going to be it's going to be hard to kill it's not as flimsy as mm. a standard um wizard but we there are some drawbacks which we'll get to in a sec um so first one is the ancestral shield uh is really good so you got a four up ward save against any wound suffered just Five in up. case it wasn't tough but enough yeah. yep um, a movable object. So once an anvil of doom has been placed on the battlefield during deployment, it cannot be moved by its crew in during the remaining mood subphases. The only thing is it says can, it can do a follow-up move in combat. Yeah, same as the uh, yeah the Tomb King's cask <coughs> type thing. Yeah. So the only you annoying just thing be... too is if you're in those reserve move type missions where you get deployed off the thing, you have to deploy on the table, touching the table edge. So you might be like right yeah. back, um, which is fine. It depends on what what you're trying to do with it i guess yeah well that's sort of the problem where you're coming down to ranges and whatnot where you put it because yeah like you're saying it certain situations you might not be in the optimal position um, i guess the other problem that you could potentially do with this if it ended up people put it too far back is um it's unbreakable but it will give ground um yeah. 
pretty sure. Is that right? Unbreakable still gives ground, is it? Yeah, if you lose combat, yeah. Yeah, so you could push it off the board, <laughs> if you know what I mean, if yeah. it's right at the back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it just depends yeah, on how would, much uh, those five attacks coming back at you, women's schools. I mean, they're going to do a lot, but if you do a lot of damage too, you might beat it in combat and push it off anyway, depending on how, yeah. you know, how good yeah, you can exactly. go through. Um, so Strike the Runes is pretty good. Uh, so an Anvil of Doom can cast the following bound spells with power level 3. So that's going to be your 2d6 plus 3. Um, so that's they're actually going to be pretty, mm. what's that, easy to get off, but they're going to be harder to dispel. Like a lot of your other bound spells are power level 1 and 2. So it's just yep. giving you a bit of extra oomph. Um, so the Rune of Oath and Steel... Uh, so this is your 7-11 casting value, so range of 24, so it's an enchantment. If this band spell is cast with a casting roll of 7, the target-friendly unit may reroll any failed armor saves roll. If this band spell is cast with an 11 or more, the target-friendly unit may reroll any failed armor save roll and improves its armor characteristic by yeah. 1 to a maximum. I mean, you're throwing, the, I mean, obviously with these ones, you're just throwing it every turn and on an mm. 8. On an eight, you're getting that top one. It's almost yeah. up, almost half the time you're increasing your your armies. Yeah. Almost depending on the range, yeah. you're putting in in the middle by plus one. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and the rerolls and really re good, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so you're going to have like you know hammers coming in with a three up armor save if you got you know the eleven with a with a reroll. It's going to be yeah. Um, so the rune of hearth and home, so another enchantment, seven plus range of self. Um, so this one's pretty cool. So until you start the next sub phase, all your friendly dwarf units within 21 inches. So it's a nice bubble of the anvil get immune to psych. Um, so yeah, immune to psych's always good. Um, especially a bubble that big. Uh, so yeah. haste and urgency. So conveyance, casting value of 10 plus, range of 24. So decent range. If target friendly unit is not fleeing and has already moved during this movement phase, it may immediately move again. Yeah, um, that's cool. Yeah. So I'm not too sure how that's going to stack with your bombers. I'm guessing you can only do a bombing. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a bit of debate once. around that. It's Yeah. Well, we'll probably get to that, but I think it's just something about on one unit, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's that yeah. might need an FAQ because anyway, we'll get to it when we get to that. But um, yeah, I have to read yeah. that. Yeah. I've again heard people, but a lot of the times people say, "Oh, you can do this," but then like when you read it, it kind of just comes down to yeah, a single word that's like, "Well, no, you can't." Yeah, it's probably not um, even deliberate on their part. It's just everyone's arguing about <laughs> some answers. Yeah, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, you need to. There needs to be a rule. So, but uh, it's always yeah. good to be able to move for dwarves because yeah, dwarves don't have the best movement out there. It is funny that um, it's said if they haven't moved this turn, um, sorry, if they have, then they get to move again. So, like, depending on when you cast this and how anal your opponent is, like, whatever, yeah. like, you'd be obviously want to do this last in the movement phase type thing. Mm. Um, yeah. But otherwise... Yeah, like if you just forget and then you go, oh, actually, I might move these guys, but you hadn't actually moved them. Well, you can't move them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kind of no, you're true. Yeah. Word for word, you are. That is correct, yeah. Mm. Um, Rune of Wrath and Ruin. This is really good. Uh, Magic Missile. Yeah. So you need a 9 plus, which isn't that hard with your power level of 3. Plus 3, yeah. 27-inch range is pretty handy. Um, 2d6 strength 4 hits, but it's got an AP of minus 2. Yeah, and that's is, a great magic missile. And like as you said, the twenty-seven yeah. inch range is a bit longer than like the fireballs and stuff because you're probably not right up deployed right at the front. Um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. They, none of the you, like you're pretty much except for the last one because of just line of sight and stuff. You're pretty much casting all these all the time, aren't you? <laughs> like, yeah. What happens with the? I can't remember with uh, bounce spells um, off the top of my head. What happens when you like double six them or? Double one. Them. I was gonna say I miscast. I'm. I'm not actually. Sure. I was just thinking about that then. <laughs> mm, mm. I haven't um, had as much bounce spells yet, but yeah, so I can't remember. Nah, I've there. only had like one. I've used and yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not too sure with the bounce mm. spells, but we can definitely look Keep into that. Going and I can look that up as we go. Oh, there we go. Cool. So the rune smiths. So like we said before, the rune lord mm, and the rune smith. 
coming in at uh, 120 points and 65 respectively. So your Rune Lord gives you access to uh, to spells of uh, being a level two wizard and the Rune Smith as a level one. Um, yeah. So it's going to give the you the access. Downside there is just the range, isn't it? I feel like using yeah. a Lord character and you still only have a low dispel range, but, but I'm, yeah. Um, well, at least, you know, because you only get the one wizardly dispel, so at least it's going to let you get a chance of dispelling stuff. So if you don't have it, you're only effectively getting one dispel a turn. Um, so, so yeah. There's no these chance, guys... sorry, bound spells, there's no roll, risk of a miscast or chance of perfect invocation. Hmm. So you just there cast you willy-nilly, like yeah. bang, 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 roll and dice, yep. Smash sure. it out, yeah. It's like the Tomb Kings in v version 6. Yeah. <laughs> just... <laughs> um, so you can take a Nose Stone, um, may purchase weapon, armor, and talisman runes. We're going to hit the talisman runes in a sec. Um, and so, yeah, the Rune Lord can take 125 points, and a Rune Smith can take you 75 points. Um, special rules, so armor bane one, so that's really good. Because um, that's. Uh, does that stack on your unit? Uh, oh no, must, sorry. No, you already rule. got that there. So it's it Fireforge. Yeah. No, no, sorry. It's the yeah, Fireforge rule. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. I remember it stacked from these guys. Um, yeah. And Grommel Armor, Grommel Weapons, Hatred Orcs and Goblins, like everything. Magic Resistance minus two, which is really good. Rune Law and Stubborn. So, yeah, sorry. This is the Fireforge. I remember they stacked Armor Bane somehow. So, if this character joined a unit, that unit will gain Armor Bane two. And flaming attacks. Should this character leave a unit, that unit loses these special rules. So mm. yeah, this is this is pretty good. But does that make um, him um, bane three in that unit? Ooh. Because it, like arm bane does stack, so I'm just wondering. Yeah, it's a good point. Because don't I you get the be... don't you get the the rules from the unit to the character and stuff? Unless it says you don't. Yeah, I would have thought you would have. Yeah, and I then he's got so. Grommel armor, uh, Grommel weapons as well. So we'd have AP with our armor bane of mm. three. Could mm. be, although he's only got two attacks or three attacks respectively. But, um, but yeah, having even a rune smith um, in a in a any sort of because it's strange that both of these have got the same special rules. So they're not the rune lord and the rune smith. Yeah, he's not so really only been in that regard. Yeah, yeah. So you're sort of imparting all these good rules onto a special rules onto a unit with only you know sixty five point costing is is pretty yep. good. Yeah. Um. So slay yeah, the legend. Just, I mean, the MR is interesting too because I still have a theory yeah. that we'll see. You know, more people start using it more. If, yeah. You know, um, than what we did in previous editions, and these guys have it coming out everywhere. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because does MR stack as well? Uh, no, I don't believe, like you have to take the highest in that unit and you stuff. Just take I think the that highest. was one of the ones yeah, that okay. specifies it. Yeah, I believe. But still, I think it was that one off the top of my head. One is two. One is two is still pretty good. Yeah, I mean, anything is going to be harder to get magic through. Um, so well, slayers that's the thing. of legend. That's what I mean. Like magic is so yeah. yeah, it's hit or miss. It feels a bit of hit or miss, but it also feels if you don't bring defense, you're going to get screwed. Um, yeah. The only thing you're not going to really do much against it, though, are is like vortexes and stuff. And there's a few that are starting to become a bit annoying, you know, like blocking line yeah. of sight ones yeah. and stuff. And that's probably not going to yeah, yeah. um, do anything about it. So, nah. um, so your slayers are legends. Um, so these guys weren't in your lord choice. So you can take as many of these as you want for your point allocation of characters. So your demon slayers coming at 130, dragon slayers at 70. Um, Pretty much the same stats that they've all had. Um, so you can take an additional hand weapon or a great weapon. I can just see a lot of great weapons, it's a lot coming through. So um, we'll hit. I mean, the Demon Slayer is initiative five. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? He's getting up there when, <coughs> when he, if he's, but he I mean, is. is he ever getting a charge? I guess it's the question. But then, yeah. If he's got that plus one initiative, I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah, but, you know, you can always, you know, possibly take the charge or if he's going to get charged. But dwarves are usually kind of stacked sort of closely. Yeah. So 
there's a good chance you could maybe put them on an inside corner and yes, yeah, um, and then charge in but, when they've been charged. Is that what you mean? Or, yeah, yeah. Or if his unit gets charged, challenge out, and then obviously yeah. he goes in the subsequent turn. Yeah. Um. So yeah, these guys that they, they have separated their two. Um, lots of special rules uh, compared to what they did with the runesmiths. So your demon slayers, they're coming in with death blow, um, grommel weapons, hatred, immune to sight, killing blow, loner, magical resistance, minus two, resolute, mm -hmm. demon slayer, unbreakable, and vanguard. Um, I mean, vanguard's not that great anymore. Um, yeah, we'll <laughs> they get, get to move the... a whole three. Yeah, yeah. So the the only big difference between the two of these is, is these the, two rules, yeah, yeah, the Slayer of Demons, Slayer of Dragons. Um, so Slayer of Demons, uh, when a character makes a roll to wound of a four plus, is always a success, regardless of the target's toughness. In addition, each unsaved wound inflicted by this character gains, oh, sorry, against the enemy model with the warp spawned rule, or whose troop type is Behemoth has the multiple wounds D three special rule. Um, again, this is probably what you were getting at before, Gomo. You're quite correct mm. that you're probably not going to see a lot of warp spawn. So yeah. it's sort of negating almost twice the points. Um, you are getting extra mm. attack, but that can yeah, be made up in other ways. And stuff, but you're not getting, yeah. I don't think your special rule is going to play in as much as it potentially could have. Um, yeah. It would have been nice to see. I know the multiple D. So the thing I had with this was, um, and you know, getting them in combat and the combat you want is always going to be the tricky bit, but that's dwarves in general, yeah. I guess. <laughs> the, yeah. Can you make use of this D3, you know, so stacking it with other weapons that are giving you more attacks or more hits or more wounds and then you're getting these, D like, you know, because you're basically getting that, not free, but, um, you know, it's like one of these... Uh, ogre blade you know um built mm. into the to the guy um so i like that but i do feel like they missed out not having monster slayer you know i feel like yeah 100 percent. i don't know i just feel like their mobility is so poor um mm. sort of that it would have been not overkill to have monster slayer given that they are supposed to be slayers yeah because um, the other problem you've got as well like you were saying before is you know you're most likely going to be taking a great weapon on these guys for the AP because they don't really have any inbuilt AP. Mm. And then that's taking your initiative down. So unless you do charge in, your initiative's not going to be great to start off with either. Um, so that's another yeah. problem we've got. Um, so you, you need to be a little bit cagey in how you actually use these guys. I think so, yeah, yeah. Which you still might be able to, like to have them hanging around Maybe you don't bring them in Slayers and stuff. Because um, I'm assuming they're loners and Slayers are loners, are they? Like you can put them in Slayers? Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. put them in Slayers. But then, you know, you're better off. You know, it's quite easy to keep cover a bit. You know, like you're not getting shot off. And they're MR2 as well, so they're probably not getting as magic missiled off as much. You know, like so they might be out yeah. hanging around and then wait for the combats to happen and then get in. Um, yeah. You know, potentially using that anvil spell to at least get them into position to charge the next turn maybe i don't know yeah but the problem being obviously most the dwarf lord is kind of built around being able to sit there and take a bit of a beating this guy's pretty yeah. tough but if a dragon charges in first and goes first i don't, I don't think it's surviving <laughs> like no nah, well yeah, I mean, you'd have to really crank up your defensive talismans or something but you can only take 25 anyway 25 uh, so, yeah you can take that minus one to hit but i mean stomps are still getting through without to hit yeah yeah like you yeah anyway we'll we'll see what happens they're, they're, they're okay but yeah they're not as good as probably what they should have been um dwarf engineers 50 points um the engineers just they're, they're reasonably cheap but they're just a bit of a buff for shooting um mm. and they can also protect to some degree um yeah war machines um so yeah, you're coming in, uh, it's just got base heavy armor. Um, so you can take a pistol, brace of pistols, or a handgun is sort of your shooting offensive or a great weapon. Um, you can take weapon armor and talisman up to 50 points. Uh, so you're an artillery master, dwarf crafted, entrenched. You got Grommel armor, hatred, orcs and goblins, obviously. Magic res one, resolute, 
and Standback Chief and Stubborn. <laughs> so Standback Stubborn's kind of kind of cool um, for these guys being able to sort of have Stubborn in the back lines. So mm. Artillery Master, unless the character is fleeing or engaged in combat once per turn during the shooting phase, a friendly unit of Quarrelers, Thunderers, Dwarfs, or Dwarf War Machines that is within its command range, which is nine inches, yeah, it's can re-roll yeah. Yeah, any rolls to hit of a natural one or re-roll a single artillery dice. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I like, and I, I might be misremembering this, but is this the first time you could do it on Thunders and Quarrelers? Was it always just, were these like, just like the Empire Engineers where you just did it on War Machines? I'm trying to remember if you could just take their ballistic skill, possibly. You might be able to impart your ballistic skill, possibly. Couldn't remember. But I just feel like that's an interesting, like going along with that um, stand and shoot thing too, like. Yeah. Um, you can't use thunders and stuff as detachments, so you don't have that. Uh, no. No. I don't think that would be bloody awesome. Because, yeah, imagine like there not is... getting the minus one to hit. Yeah. Um, from stand and shoot. And then re-rolling ones as well. Yeah, the only detachment Those... I know of is the um, Iron Drakes. But oh, the they, they, but they but can't, their weapon's different. They can't use, yeah, they can't use this. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, um, no, but even just shooting in general, does that natural one, like, um, what I'm getting at is, yes, you probably want to throw this on, you know, bolt throws and stuff like that yep. and even the organ gun which you got to roll to hit and stuff but is it also if you've got enough of these is it also worth putting it on like you know using on a shooting phase with mm. some thunderers or whatever because of that natural reroll on the ones you know you, if you've got 20 thunderers unloading you, you're re-rolling a few of those hits you know yeah yeah exactly um and it's given you know extra bits and pieces to the unit um but yeah, we'll sort of we'll see. And remember, sorry, just the the thing that people got to remember. I don't think you have to ever tell you what you're doing here until you do it. So, you know, yep. fire your cannons first or whatever, and see if you're using that artillery dice for reroll. And then if not, mm -hmm. throw it onto the thunders or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So sort of like as the yeah. Yeah, yeah like think about the order that you're shooting at because then you can yep. actually make use of this a bit better where, um, you know, yeah. you want to you want to reroll that artillery dice, but if you don't have to that turn, well, now I'll throw it into your thunderers and they take their shot. So Yeah, yeah. exactly. A lot, like and you were nine saying, inches, I mean, that's yeah, it's a big... pretty good chance you're going to be in range of all those people. Yeah, exactly. Um, so stand back, Chief, a character with a special rule cannot be targeted by an enemy shooting... Um, sorry, targeted by enemy shooting or by enemy spells whilst it is within three inches of a friendly unit whose troop type is War Machine. Um, yep. So that even includes your Anvil of Doom because that's a War Machine too. Ah, uh, yes, true. Um, yep. So yep. that's pretty cool because he's can't really be shot off if he's doing that. Yep. Um, so yeah, you can also entrench War Machines. I don't know if we saw that, but it's um, that's just taking away their uh, initiative buff is it when they charge when they're entrenched on low linear obstacles i don't know i mean you would you would do it but i don't know how much it'll make a difference just because i think fly doesn't count so i reckon you'll be attacked your war machines will get attacked by flyers a lot and cav i guess but yeah. um so yeah. it, it, it might work it might not it might keep them alive a bit longer who knows yeah 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 100%. cool hey i might just um, jump to the oh oh yeah yeah do you want to jump to the other rooms just smash it yeah in yeah or? Hundred percent. So, yeah, we do have some talismanic ones, which obviously you could have taken on some of these characters. Um, yeah. So I missed them. So yeah, let's smash through them quickly, and then yeah, that was me. I think I swapped back too quick. So yeah, uh, Master Rune of Calm. So this is the Master Rune. Uh, Bearer of the Master Rune of Calm can cast the following uh, with a power level of two. So it's a hex, eight and twelve. Uh, if this bound spell is cast, casting result of eight or more. Enemy wizards that are within 18 inches of this model when attempting to cast a spell must increase that spell's casting value by 2. If this band spell is cast with a casting result of 11 or more, enemy wizards that are within 36 inches of this model when att attempting to cast a spell must increase that spell's casting value by 2. Um, that spell lasts until the next start of your subturn phase. Mm. 
Yeah, so this is another one that, yeah, I, you can definitely, uh, you could probably definitely run without the amble if you're stacking some of these things. Yeah. Yeah, having a plus two, yeah, it's, it is starting to really increase some of those spells. Um, but yeah, obviously, it, if the spells do go off, you need to roll higher as well. Um, so it's mm, sort of one of those. Mm. But it's going to make it harder for them to go oh, off in the first enemy place. Units so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Um, so Master Rune of Balance, uh, the Anvil of Doom and Dwarf Runesmiths only. Once per turn, the bearer of the Master Rune of Balance may use it when attempting a wizardly dispel. If they do so, roll an extra d6 when making the dispel roll and discard the lowest result. Mm, um, that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's pretty pretty good. It's only once per turn, but obviously, you know. You but you know what though? That, like if you yeah. have the master, I mean, you'd have to have the anvil plus, say, a brunesmith. If you both took, no, you can only take one of these. Yeah, mm. I was just going to say at least one of these because if if we're getting a lot of level fours running around, we're probably not getting a lot of armies that have multiple wizards. I mean, you might, but yeah, you know, yeah. so really they're only casting four turns and spells, and the chances are you're gonna stop one with this one plus you know some of these other um buffs that you can do so yeah man and then you've got mr on top of it it's gonna be interesting to see how magic defense yeah. you know is effective or not yeah yeah well that's it you can pick when you want to use it so you know you're going to be waiting until they roll something high on something that you you know you're gonna have troubles dispelling that you really yeah. want to stop yeah. so yeah that's yeah. that's really good so yeah, Master Rune of Spite, 35 points. Um, each time the bearer of the Master Rune of Spite loses a wound to an enemy during attack of the combat phase, the unit that made the attack suffers a strength five with an AP of minus two. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's okay, but you you got to lose a wound. Um, so at, at yeah. the most, you're only going to get three, three attacks back. So I think you're going to be... Yeah. Better off spending it somewhere else. Uh, so Rune of Spell Breaking, um, you can get as many of these as you want. Uh, well, up to three. Uh, so 25 points. Anvil of Doom and Dwarf Rune Smiths only. Single use. The Bearer of Rune of Spell Breaking may use it instead of making a dispel attempt. If they do so, the spell is automatically dispelled with no dispel roll required. Mm. Pretty cool. It's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, geez. Yeah. So this is like a proper... Proper old spell school scroll. Spell scroll. Yeah. yeah. Rune of Warding, uh, single use. So each Rune of Warding gives the bearer two plus ward against a single wound. Um, so it's 20 points. So this is kind of good if you do take a Demon Slayer and want to give him an extra wound. It's like, you know, yeah, yeah, 85 odd percent or 84 percent of, you know, getting an extra wound. Uh, Rune of Luck, single use. The bearer of Rune of Luck may use it to re-roll a single fail to hit or to wound roll or uh, re-roll a single armor fail, failed armor save roll. Um, but it's only a single use and it is 15 points. So, mm. you know. Rune of Furnace, five points. The Bearer of the Rune of Furnace is a three plus ward against wounds suffered that were caused by an attack that has flaming attacks. I don't mind that for five points. Mm, five um, points, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're going to see a bit of flaming around with um, the amount of undead, I think, getting around. So, yeah, I mean, for five points, three plus ward, I'd, I'd be throwing that on a few things. Um, Rune of Passage, five points again. The Bearer of the Unit of Passage gains the Move Through Cover Special Rule. Any unit joined by the Bearer also gains the Move Through Cover Special Rule. Should the Bearer leave the unit for any reason, the unit loses his Special Rule. Um, I think that's pretty good for the move through mm. cover for five points. Yep. Um, again, it's very cheap and a bit situational, but very handy because you're in part on your unit. Um, yeah. So your standard runes, there's some really, really good ones in here. Um, Master rune of Grung, Grungni. 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 <laughs> <laughs> for 80 points. Uh, so this is going to be your BSB, obviously. A unit carrying a standard inscribed with Master rune of Grungi has a five plus board save against any wound suffered. In addition, Whilst within six inches of a model carrying the standard friendly units have a six plus ward against any wound suffered during the shooting phase. Um, so you can really buff up some of these units with five plus ward. 
Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'd, and the six up shooting, that. you'd have to get close to that. Hmm. That six up ward bit, you have to be careful on that because it's six inches of the model, isn't it? So that's going to yeah. reduce some of that. But um, yes, but yeah, the five up ward, that's good. Yeah, and you can have your lord or whatever in this unit and not have to yeah. give them a five up ward as well. So obviously totally. that's sort of yeah. yeah. Um, Master Rune of uh, Stromney Redbeard, 75 points. I absolutely love this. This is like the new bullshit banner for me. Um, when calculating <laughs> its combat result, any friendly unit within the command range of the model carrying the standard inscribed with the Master Rune of Stromney Redbeard may claim an additional bonus of plus one combat result. So that's within the command range. So it's probably going to be nine inches. And these stack from what I've been reading. So if you have multiple in a combat, the standards mm, don't oh stack. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. But yes, this, this will would. stack. I think or it would, yeah. Things... And if you've got enough little units, you can just all go in together. Like... Yeah. Because yeah. I've been looking into what does stack. So close order stacks if you're in combat yep. order. Um, but I believe you can only pick one standard to use. Um, so I don't know how that's going to work for if you have multiple... Um, just say you had the battle banner or whatever it's called now, yeah, um, yeah. plus the war banner um, on two separate units. If it was, if one wasn't on a BSB, oh, I was going to say it it's says, okay. If you've you got only... a BSB and a standard, you can use both. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, if you've yeah. got two standards, you can only pick one. I thought. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know if that includes the runes or the sorry gotcha. the that are on it, magic like items the... inscribed yeah. upon it. So. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I thought, it, yeah, not, thought it was more just the plus one on the standard. But if that's got some other rules, I would have thought it might go on there as well. But who knows? Yeah, yeah. Because I've been reading onto that. Although you don't get a lot of things that impart plus one combat result on yeah. a standard. Yeah, so orcs have a few. I'm going to see. But yeah, yeah. But if it's on the unit, it definitely stacks. Whereas this one is, it goes on the unit, not the standard. So the unit gets it. Yeah. No. Totally. Yeah. It's just. Yep. It goes. Yep. Carrying the standard. So yeah. Um, within that command, Master, there's a plus one combat. Yeah, within like that it. command yeah. command range. Um, so Master Rune of Hesitation coming in at 45 but points. Ma like, sorry, but imagine if you have a couple of these little demon slayers and stuff hanging around or dragon slayers or, geez, even engineers, and then you charge in your unit yep. and there's three or four of these little dudes that come in as well and they've all got these extra combat res. So they're not taking up yeah. a lot of room, so they've all got, you know. I mean, gyrocopters. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they're I all didn't units think within that nine inches, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. have them sitting. Oh, they're flying. Can they see it? No, they're not large target, are they? No. So you can't hide them behind a unit, and then fly around. Uh, no, that's cool. No, but anyway, yeah, that's interesting. It's a good one. I like it. But it is a master rune. But yeah. Yeah, it is a master rune. There's a lot of these master runes are actually pretty good. Um, so the but master it's rune. Um, sorry, the master rune's got to go on the BSB or not really? No, no, that's different. Uh just the point allocation. Oh, just so the, the point. The top, yeah. The top one does. The master rune of Grungi does say battle standard bearers only. Um, oh, yes. This one for yeah. Stromney Redbeard. Um, it doesn't, yeah. but it's it's seven. You can stack points. up with two other ones now that aren't yep. masters and not worry about sure. points limits. Like you could do the rune of confusion on it. Yep. Because it's unlimited for a BSB. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, the hesitation's really good. So an enemy that charges the front arc of a unit carrying a unit scribe with a unit of hesitation does not count as having charge for the purposes of choosing which weapon or using special rules it may have. Um, so things like lances won't get yep. their special rules. Players, um, lances, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, when it says um, thing, it does not count as having the purpose of choosing which weapon to use or using any special rules it may have. Is that it? Is that the enemy unit or is that the weapon? Uh, an enemy that charges the front arc does not count as having charged for the purposes, I'd say just for the weapon, for the purposes of choosing which weapon to use or using any special rules that it may have. So to me, that's, that's just going to be, yeah, your lance. Right, okay. Because I was wondering, like, you know, I don't know, but I'm assuming there's some units that have innate bonuses if they do charge for certain things. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. I'm trying to think, actually, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I'd think that'd still all count, 100%, because this just says the weapon. So for like, you the know, uh, for an example, I don't know, that wouldn't count then. So, like, you know, the stabber 
for Savage Orcs is D3 impact hits or one impact hit or yeah. whatever. Um, but that's a weapon, so therefore it wouldn't count. Yeah. 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 Yep. But if cool. but yeah, but if it was a unit rule, then yeah, it would. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Or if it was like a a you know a banner that gave impact hits or something like that, then yeah, that would. Or even still... like um, you know, like hatred. You charge in yep. on your chart. You're counting as charging, so you get to reroll. Yep. Correct. In the first round of combat, yep. you still would get that. Is that what yep. you're saying? Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's it probably needs it because I reckon you could read it the other way sometimes too. Because if I took out that, if I said an enemy unit that charges the front arc of unit carrying a standard inscribed with this rune does not count as having charge for the purpose of any using any special rules it may have. Like if I if I took out that as having which charge weapon? for the purpose yeah. of choosing which weapon to use, or if I took that out and just said yeah. charge for the purpose of u- using any because it's an or there, so it's like what is the or? <laughs> it's brackets here. I'm a computer nerd. Yeah. Is the brackets here or is the brackets, you know, like, because yeah, yeah. I could see how you could argue that it's like, no, no, it's a unit, doesn't get its special rules for charging. And so, therefore, does a hatred disappear? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I think that'd be pretty, be, uh, pretty strong if I had that as well. <laughs> reading behind the rule between the lines here, but anyway. Yeah. Cool. Um, so rune of confusion. So this is always good. So an enemy unit you know, that charges the front arc of a unit may carrying a standard scribe with a unit of confusion makes a disordered charge. So that's so that's the help initiative out. one, isn't it? Yeah. So things yeah. like your hammers, which are initiative three, and you get a plus one yeah. bonus um, when charged. That's going to bump. Oh, up so they go to four. So, right. Okay. Now that's yeah. that he's getting good because. But then you've got um, and then you've got some of those other ones that can buff. Initiative, but that's only real characters, yeah. isn't it? Not the units. Yeah, right yeah. So but that's going to help. Just, out. I do not want to charge you with my orcs. Like, not only do you hate me, um, yeah. my initiative's not much better than yours, if at all. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, my well, four is nothing dangerous. to sneeze at. It's sort of you yeah, like elves and all that will still go as well. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, but everything else you're going to be going equal law. Yeah, first. Mm. Um, so rune of fear. 30 points, a unit carrying the standard inscribed with the Rune of Fear gains a Fear special rule. Yeah, it's okay. Um, Rune of Battle, 25 points. So this is where you get your plus one. So when calculating its combat result, a unit carrying a standard inscribed with the Rune of Battle may claim an additional plus one combat result. Um, the good thing about that is that's what I was thinking because that that stacks. So you could have that on multiple units. You could have that one on that one. Hmm. Is that what you mean? Um, like you could put that and that together. Yeah, so I could have two units of battle on two different um, banners. Two two separate banners. Obviously, one banner would yeah. need something you need, else. Yeah, like one of them would have to have something like that, and then the other yeah. one can have that by itself. Yeah, yeah or whatever. But, yeah, yeah, but that that's why I was getting a little bit confused because in the rule book I was reading this up and it said like um, you could only choose one standard to use. So I didn't know if that includes yeah, like, like the whole effects yeah, that yeah. as well it might be in the faq but i can't remember after now that i've um done a lot more you know not a heap but a lot more games and a lot more reading of this i need to keep re- go back and rereading the faq because sometimes i originally yeah, yeah. read it a few times i was like skimming things because like, i uh, never come up to that haven't read, heard about it don't care like in my brain mm. and now i'm like oh hang on just uh, keep going back and looking at it yeah yeah no it's like that i always tend to skip the faq a bit as well which is just me mm. being lazy I'll just go straight to the BBB, the the big blue book. Um, so Stroller's rune, twenty five points. This is the most useless rune. Um, so a yeah. unit carrying a standard inscribed with this uh, gains the vanguard, which is only a three inch move. I, oh. It's just they need to. That should have been changed. And yeah. vanguard was just what it used to be. Was it eight or something like that? Oh. Yeah, eight or twelve or ten, 10 or or twelve something. or something. I can't remember. But yeah, a little bit more useful. Something right? better than three. Yeah, yeah. They should have had a war, a lot, maybe a dwarf rule that vanguards like you know six inches or something, mm. something that's not three. Um, or even so if you know what, I'm sorry, these are totally unrelated thoughts. But um, imagine if dwarves just had a rule that said, on the first turn or first movement you do, you and if you march you double your move, like, or something, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, in the yeah. first turn, dwarves can, like, surge ahead, but after that, they're slow, or something like that. And yeah, then yeah, therefore, yeah. you could use it in a vanguard and go, or whatever, I don't know, yeah. some type of rule yeah. where 
dwarves are technically slow and they can't shoot fast and all that, but at least turn one or whatever, they have a bit of a oomph, you know, and then they're not as static, you know. They are natural anyway. sprinters, dwarves. <laughs> yeah, that. that's right. <laughs> They sprint ahead and then, yeah, slow down. So, yeah, Rune of Courage. Um, so, unit carrying a standard scribe with Rune of Courage automatically passes any fear or terror test it's required to make. So, yeah, mm, it's not too bad, good. but if you do have your um, your bubble that is immune to um, psychology from your anvil, obviously that, that could be something else to consider. Um, so, your engineering rune, so your master rune of... Immolation is coming at 30 points. So cannons only, single use. If cannon inscribed with this master rune loses its last wound to an enemy attack, it explodes. Um, every enemy in a base combat with this model suffers D6 strength 5 hits with an AP of minus 2. The cannon is then removed from play. Uh, oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's okay. Uh, you might see it. Probably won't. All that much. Um, so Master Rune of Disguise. A uh, war machine inscribed with this Master Rune of Disguise is always considered to be behind full cover. I think that's decent. At least it can't be shot mm -hmm. as easy. Although cannons can be quite hard to kill by shooting, but um, it's better than your, your first. Uh, so the Rune of Skewering for 20 points. I do like this one. I think you'll see this quite a bit. So Bolt Throws only. So your Bolt Throw inscribed with this Rune has a plus one modifier to its strength. In addition, no armor save yeah. is permitted against wounds by caused by a bolt thrower inscribed with this rune. So warden regeneration can be take it as normal because I think it's only minus three or something to AP. Yeah, that's nah, good. Um, yeah, so this will get rid of it completely. Put on the flanks and shoot down the knights right down the yeah. side. <laughs> or your dragons, good decent mm. for your dragons coming in at strength seven. Well, those two up ones, yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wounding on threes, two up saves, three up saves, gone. Yeah. Gone. Uh, Rune of Forging, 15 points, single use. Um, but it's not too bad um, when you get these for single use on yeah. artillery. So a War Machine inscribed with this Rune of Forging may use it to reroll a single misfire on an artillery dice. Um, so that does come in handy. Uh, Rune of Burning, so you, for 10 points, you get Flaming Attack Special Rule. Rune of Reloading for five points. Again, this is too it. bad. That's good. Yeah, yeah, for five points. A War Machine inscribed with this Rune of Reloading can shoot every turn, even if it misfired and malfunctioned during its previous turn. Um, so that's taking away where you can't shoot this turn or the next. To kind of yeah, I, I mean, that. that's just, to me, you put that on everyone. Like, obviously, you can't, you yeah. know, like mix them. But I just think, mm. if you, if, well, yeah. you know, if you're going War Machine heavy you need to, yeah. the more shots you get off the better yeah yeah and you know it's it happens and it usually happens in your first or second turn <laughs> um mm. so yeah yeah, exactly. it is good to yeah well they're the ones you need to be shooting eh? you probably don't shoot yeah, yeah. That or turn four onwards yeah exactly uh so you store what rune five points um again this is one of those meh uh so when calculating its combat result a war machine inscribed with this rune so you get plus one combat result um, but if I wonder if combat, that's one that you might see. Oh, you can't stack this one. Um, like on the anvil as a five point thing in case someone, if it is sitting yeah. at the back of the board, they don't want to get pushed off. I don't know, but I still. That's a good point. Yeah. For the anvil, that's a very good point. Um, but but yeah, I also think it's one of the ones, ones you might throw on to mix up the reloading one. You know, like you got three war machines and you don't want to yeah. spend a heap of points. So, like, right, reloading on each one, but now one's got that, one's got forging, one's got skewing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two yeah, out yeah. skewering because they're bolt throwers, but one's got reloading. Yeah. And then so I throw a five-point <laughs> combat res one on it. Yeah. But, yeah. But that would be, yeah, cool. that would be actually very, very good to throw on your um, your anvil just to help you win combats. Mm. Um, so where were we? We were back at... Uh, Infantry. Troops. Infantry. I'll try and Smashing smash through, through the army now. It's probably the yeah, biggest part when you go through it. characters and all that stuff. But yeah, that's yeah, be... that is. So Dwarf Warriors um, coming in at eight points. I mean, they're pretty much your same stock standard. We won't yeah. again go through all the... Um, so you can take your great weapons or shields for a point. Um, so zero point to one per thousand can have drilled um veteran or you can take a stand up to 50 points 
they're all like you've got so much MR1, so it's really good. Um, but one of the good things is shield wall. So if you do take your shields, you can only be in the first turn, you can only be pushed back. Um, yeah, instead yes, of, yeah, yeah. Give so if, uh, instead of, yeah. sorry, give ground instead of, give um, ground, sorry, yeah, instead, instead of fall of back, good order, back. yeah. So that, it, that just, unless starts. you break, hey, if you break, you've got to run, but if you roll for by go, you can just give ground and it's only once. Is that what that one is? Because I get that yeah, and yeah. stubborn mixed up. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I just changed, but, changed it, but yeah, being dwarfs and you know, if you're going to have your VSBs, it, it's just good to play into strategies. You can have strategies yeah. where, you know, guys won't be falling back in good order and this and that. Um, so you might help sort of plan. Yeah. It's once charges. per game too. It's not the first one. It's not yeah. like stubborn that automatically passes its first one. Or it yeah. Sorry. Like, once per game. Yep. Yep. Yeah. This is once per game. So you can yep. choose which one when it happens, which is good. Yeah. Cause I think some of the other ones you can sort of um, potentially just waste by throwing shit in there or, you know, shooting them, yeah. making panic or something. Yeah. But well, that's probably yeah. hard to do. Um, how often drilled? I mean, again, it depends on how drilled gets ruled, but the way I would rule it now where you can, you know, basically before you move the unit anyway, you can always do this drilled reform. Um, yep. Are you going to see them on these? Because I would have thought maybe on these or I don't know, like are you going to use drilled more than say other armies might because of the lack of movement a bit you're sort of a bit more defensive so you want to be yeah. in the right formation or you want to go wide when you need to type thing i would say yes 100 yeah, yeah. especially yeah. like if it does come out drilled going because i've got a similar thought process to you and now that yeah it's interpreted yeah. so i yeah. interpret it the same way so yeah same with veteran as well like veterans always handy just being better that's um, the re that's the panicky one isn't it is that what that is yeah panic no. or psychology uh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so long beards coming in at twelve points. Uh, I got my dog in the background carrying on. So these are coming in again. Shields and great weapons for one point. Um, so your elder can take weapon runes or talismans up to twenty five points. So is, you can actually get pretty defensive and a little bit choppy. Um, so these guys again, close order, grumble weapons, magic resistance, resolute shield wall vulnerable and veteran. So your vulnerable rule is, uh, or venerable, sorry, uh, unless this unit is fleeing, friendly units within six can reroll fail panic tests, which is always yep. handy. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty, that's, so, that's yeah. been on long beads for years, isn't it? Mm. So, so like yeah, these guys are, yeah, yeah, getting into your elite of... infantry a bit. Yeah. So you got your weapon skill five, strength four. So yeah, these, these guys are pretty good. Um, so yeah, we'll crack on the head with your quarrelers and thunderers. So these guys are actually coming in a little bit cheaper, which is nice. Um, and they're still the only problem is is your weapon skills come down with these guys to weapon skill three now instead of weapon skill four. Oh, so yeah. they're not they're orcs. as good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Orcs they're not as good as what they used to be. Movement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they are cheaper. They are cheaper. Um, so your quarreler is nine points, your thunder is a ten, um, obviously from crossbows to handguns. So your coral has got hand weapons, crossbows, heavy armor, thunderers, hand weapons, handguns, and heavy armor. So heavy armor's inbuilt, which is good. Both can take uh, great weapons, but for two points, and um, shields for one. Um, a veteran, you can replace your crossbow or handgun with a pistol or brace of pistols. Um, and they've, they've both got the same close order, dwarf crafted. Hatred for orcs and goblins, mm. magic resistance mm. and resolute. So yeah, these guys are—they're pretty good that they've come down um, in price, and you can take a unit five up. So I could just see there's going to be quite a few of these smaller units getting around, and that seems to be what people are taking—is you know, multiple little units of ten just out on the flanks. Right. And, How um, yeah. what are they taking? Like what 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 seems to be the uh. You know, quarrelers I've, or handguns. I've seen a lot of it's thunderers, like, yeah. There you go. Yep. Yep. So that's the shorter range but better AP. Yeah. yeah but they're all sort right? of ponderous. Yeah. So if, if you move, yeah, you're not, so you move, you're not, it's yeah. You're not hitting much, so you gotta be a yep. little bit careful with how you position. There's minus two, isn't it, from moving. Mm. Yep. Yeah. 
And they're only bears, uh, so you're hitting on sixes. Yeah, 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 great. yeah. Mm. That's a problem with dwarves, yeah. Um, but yeah, for when you're getting a stand and shoot, that's where you're sort of, you know, you, you're going quite well there. Um, so rangers, I love these guys, 11 points. Um, so they're coming in at weapon skill 4 and ballistic skill 4, so they're actually shooting better than your standard dwarves. Um, they're only strength 3, but so, yeah, you just got to be a little bit careful with... Um, where you put them for getting into combat. Um, so hand weapons, crossbows, and heavy armor. So they've got standard. the better AP. That's no strength, eh, with their normal Gromwell. Is it, do they have Gromwell weapons or no? No, uh, no, no. Don't. Anyway, no. that's just normal. Just weapons. your elite guys. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, but they got the, the – from your standard quarrelers, they got one point of weapon skill and ballistic skill better. So that's um, – and that's two more points for that. So – um, so I, would I you be taking these well. throwing axes with them? I mean, you can, if, quick, especially if you want to use shot, them multi, as... Multi-shot two, move and shoot, quick shot. Hmm. BS4, I don't know, maybe. And these guys are skirmishers user, and scouts. So, yeah, yeah. Hmm. But, yeah, just the multi-shot and the S- extra ballistic skill sort of makes them a little bit better. But, yeah, yeah. two points for great weapons, shields um, plus one point. But yeah, as you said, you can take your throwing axes. Old Dead Eye goes pretty good as well because um, you can give a give him a brace of pistols, which is going to help mm. out. So you know they're not going to be too shabby taking a standard shoot in combat. These guys, um, and also they're going to be a lot more maneuverable because they've got move through cover, open order, obviously scout and skirmish for a dwarf. I think these guys are about yeah. as maneuverable as you're going to get. Um, so, yeah, I like them. I, I think they're good. Um, how, how much points were they based? Like, they're obviously going to get them in core now, one of them, but mm. have they come down as well? Like, do you think you're going to see a lot yeah, more of them? Because, I, I yeah, I believe they used to be quite expensive just for yeah. the scout. Um, yeah. And a lot of the time, I don't know if you had to pay for skirmish as well, but, I mean, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I've got the book here, but I can't remember, but, yeah. It's, yeah, I, I just don't, I just know I haven't really run into a lot of them. A couple of times I have with dwarves, where they, you know, there's always been one unit to try to come out the back, and oh, that was more miners actually. Yeah, um, they were the ambushers, not scouts. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting confused. I don't think I have oh. seen rangers yeah. a whole lot, to be honest. It's probably more the miners that I would have run into occasionally, no. but not. I've taken them much, a few but... times and seen them a few times, and you see them coming in with great weapons. Yeah, and... they're fourteen, so they're three points cheaper. Yeah. Um, but they got scout. Is scout free there? Yeah, scout's free. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, they're basically three points cheaper. But they, as you said, they've lost. No, they haven't lost anything. Not these guys. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Good your cool. your quarrelers and thunderers did. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, hammers. These guys are great. Mm. Um, sixteen yep. points. They might have gone up a point possibly. Um. So they've got their hand weapons, great hammers, and heavy armor. They don't have plate, um, which is annoying as a um, stock standard. Um, Did they can take to? shields? Uh, I thought they were I believe, always five up save. Or were uh, they? I think I think eighth edition they did. I thought they had right. plate or they had um, grumble armor or something. Uh, I maybe, don't believe yeah. they had heavy. Maybe they did, but I, I just thought they were a bit more beefy. Um, but yeah, you can take, um, uh, so they get shoot, they can, you can, they can take have drill, they can have veteran, they can take shields. Yeah. And the thing with shields that's really good on this is you got shield wall, so you can, um, affect that into little plans of what you want to do. So they don't have to use the great hammers. Hey, so they have um, to be using shields to use shield wall. So people just need champs, to remember that. No, they are seven points for... Yeah, okay, that's cool. Yep. Seven points. Um, oh, I've gone too far. But... Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so drilled and veteran, one point apiece. You can purchase a standard up to 75 points. So that's going to be your red beard, Stromney red beard um, mm. you can throw in there. Um, Royal champ, like you said, he can take 25 points of talismans and weapons. It's close order, Grumble weapons. Um, it's going to be handy. Um, hatred. Magic Resistance 1, Resolute, Royal Guard, Shield Wall, Static Defender, and Stubborn. So these are all yeah, nice little 
<laughs> yeah. So Royal Guard, as you said before, your army can include one unit of hammers for every king or thane. Any model in a unit that is joined by a king or thane can issue a challenge in the same manner as a character. Um, so if the king or thane leaves, then you lose it. So yeah, you can just keep throwing hammers in as your guys doing yeah, challenges. And just, <laughs> yeah, and just kit up your lords and your BSPs to do as many attacks and wounds as yeah. possible. Plus then you yeah. said, yeah, you're bump, bumping up combat res through the... Uh, is that the Gromley one you said? Like the uh, that banner you were talking about? Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. Were, and then <laughs> yeah, Stoic Defender giving you yep. plus one at energy and attack. I didn't realise that on the turn you get charged. Yep. So uh, I'm starting to think so of how do you get rid of dwarves by not going into combat with them, just trying to blow them off the table some other way yeah. <laughs> until there's hardly have any of them left. <laughs> yeah. So that stacks well. So the great hammers aren't a great weapon. Um, they pretty much are, mm. but they, they don't have that strike last. Yeah. Yeah. So they just AP won't get their two, shield. Yeah, and armor vein too, but you still require two hands. But you can not use your shield and use a hand weapon and shield and yes, get access true. to your sh shield wall for one turn. Yeah. Um, so your iron breaker is coming at 15 points. Um, hand weapon, full plate armor and shield. So these guys are pretty cool. Again, um, they aren't your beat stick. They're your, you're definitely your anvil. Um, so you can take um, Drake Fire Pistol and a Drake Gun and Cinder Blast Bombs, which are pretty good. Uh, you can purchase your weapon runes um, up to 25 points for your Iron Beard. You can have the Drilled Special Rule and oh, one unit per 1,000 points can have Drilled and purchase a standard up to 50 points. So close order, Gromrel Armor, Gromrel Weapons, Hatred, Orcs and Goblins, Magical Resistance 1, Regimental Unit. So you can take your detachments of Iron Drakes, Resolute, Rune of Protection, Shield Wall, and Stubborn. So Rune of Protection has a six-up ward against any wound suffered with caused by non-magic attacks. The only good thing about Iron Breakers, or it's not the only good thing, sorry, is <laughs> if somebody charges you, just remember, you can have your champion have um, his Drake gun and whatnot, and he can also have his Cinder Blast bombs, which is this is very good for if somebody charges you for your um, standard shoot. Is a unit with Cinder Blast bombs hit by Cinder Blast bombs suffers D6 plus one um, rather than a single hit. Yeah. Um, it's strength five minus one AP. Where is flame the attack, Cinder Blast shot. bomb? It's Where on the other the side. Cinder? So it's on Andrax, oh, where Andrax are. Oh, it was. Okay, I thought I was on there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you can couple all this stuff in just to get your combat res from mm. the standard shoot, etc. Yeah. Um, which will definitely help out. Um, and then going yeah, on into Andrax. Yeah. Um, so these guys have got weapon skill four, so they're not as good as your weapon skill five. Ballistic skill four. Um, and the Iron Warden, just have a look at that ballistic skill five because that's very important. Um, you only need a unit five plus. They're 15 points a piece. Hand weapons, straight gun, and full plate armor. So you take your Iron Warden as your champ. There's, you've seen lots of builds like this so far. They're, they're pretty important in the current meta. Um, mm. And my Iron Warden may replace their Drake gun with a... Drake Fire Pistol or a Troll Hammer Torpedo for 15 points. And he can take his Cinder Blast Bombs for 15 points. So you can take um, both, eh? You can have plus 30 points. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if you good. wanted to take that Cinder Blast Bombs. But yeah, they, they are really good. Um, a unit. Uh, so yeah, you can have Drilled or a Stand Up to 50 points. So you close order. You can be a detachment for your Iron Breakers as well, which is really good for your detachment rules. You've got Grommel Lama. Um, Hatred Orcs and Goblins, all the rest, Magic Resistance 1, Resolute. Rune of Warding, which gives you a 5-up ward against Flaming Attacks, and you're stubborn as well. Um, but the one good thing with this is your Troll Hammer Torpedo. Um, mm -hmm. So this is coming in at 24-inch range. It's Strength 8, which is really, really good. So you're going to be winning on Dragons on 2s most of the time. AP of 3, Dwarf Crafted for your Stand and Shoot. So you can still do a Stand and Shoot. Um... And with a ballistic skill of five, I mean, you could be hitting on twos, threes. Just depends yeah. on 
where the dragon's at and if you've moved and whatnot. But even fours, yeah. like um, if you have a couple of units of these, just five of them with them in, like you, yeah. you're getting two or three shots off a turn, at least two if you have two of them. Yeah. Um, and flame yeah, attacks, multiple good. wounds, D3. <clears throat> yeah, they are really good. Um, so, yeah, your miners coming in at 12 points. Um, heavy armor, great weapons. Um, they can take blasting charges, which uh, is a strength six, AP one, armor bane one, flame attack, quick shot rule. Um, they're ambushes. They've got close order, hatred, vanguard for your three inch vanguard, resolute, magic resistance minus one. Um, and they can also take a steam drill, um, which basically it's going to let you re roll. Um, it's pretty pricey, but. On. Might be useful though, yeah, because it's ambushes yeah, yeah. are straight four up all the time now. Mm. So, depending on the size of the unit, how much points you sunk into this, you might, might, you might have to take this, yeah, just to give you a really good chance of coming on. Mm. Yeah, it's plus 20 points, but yeah, it is, it, yeah, I don't know if if you're really adamant on coming on. You know, your turn two or whenever it's going to be mm. coming on. Then. It's a lot though, 20 points. It's almost two, yeah. two more people. Plus you have to pay for the prospector at the same time. So 26 points. Mm. Mm. But he gets a furious charge. <laughs> yeah, true. But he's strike last. So. I don't know, strike last. Yeah. But when he does, then he's got strength seven, six. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two mm. attacks. Anyway, we'll keep going. So Slayers, uh, 12 points apiece. Um Weapon skill four, so they're not fantastic at hitting. They're okay, but your giant slayers weapon skill five. Um, so they've only got hand weapons. Um, so any number of models may take one of the following. So you can have an additional hand weapon or a great weapon. Um, any number of models may, may be upgraded to a giant slayer for seven points per model. So you can mm. have a bunch of two attack giant slayers kicking around. Um, yep. It's pretty good though. 14. But, oh no, sorry, it's plus sevens for the nineteen. Plus seven. Yeah. 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 Um. So your troll slayers death blow. So that's obviously if they die, the unit that attacks them takes a strength three AP one hit. Hatred orcs and goblins. So immune to psych. They're loners. Uh, they got motley crew, as we all know, is a pain in the butt. Um, open order, resolute slayer, and unbreakable. Um. So we'll hit that Slayer and they got the Fight Me rule, which we'll hit in a sec. Um, the Giant Slayers, Deathblow, Fight Me, Hatred, Orcs and Goblins, Munisar, all the same sort of stuff. All the same so, as the Fight Me rule. He's basically a character. Yeah. He's a champ, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's basically, yeah, what it says. Any model with a special rule can issue and accept challenges in the same model, uh, same as manner as a character. Um, and the Slayer rule is uh, any model... When you make a ro uh, roll to wound, a four plus is always a success regardless of the target's toughness. So you can yeah, take they're out. They're just lacking monsters. that AP, aren't they? Like hundred percent. Yeah, unless you've got some of that magic, whatever that you could do with them. But uh, and they can't yeah. take magic standards. They can just take standards. Oh no, purchase standard runes up to fifty. Okay. Hmm. I just yeah. wonder if there's some builds here where you just basically take five giant slayers. One of them's a standard and load some stuff up and see what they do. But they probably get really pricey. Yeah, they would. You kind <laughs> of need great almost, It's a hundred well, points straight yeah. up, and then yeah. Mm. Mm. So yeah, gyrocopters they're coming in at sixty points. Um, these are the ones everyone's sort of talking about. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people. Um, they've got three wounds, two attacks, um, and they're tough five. Uh, so they've got a four up save, which is pretty good. Um, hand weapon and steam gun is their equipment. So you can upgrade to a brimstone gun or a clatter gun. So your brimstone gun is range 18, so strength 5, AP minus 2. So it's a bit stronger. Um, and multiple so shots, D3 plus 1. Yep. Um, mm. And it's quick shot, so you, you can still move and um, you're not getting your minus 1 uh, for move and shoot. And your flaming attacks. Um, the clatter gun's a bit longer range, so 24 inch, strength 4, AP minus 1. Armor Bane 1, um, Dwarf Crafted again, so it's move and shoot, so you can march and shoot. Multiple shots, D6. Oh, it would have been seeing mm. like a nice D3 plus X. Oh, I don't know, D6 is a bit hit and miss, isn't it? Mm. And again, quick shot. 
Um, so special rules. Yeah, yeah I just dive think bomb. like if you're flying, wouldn't you want to just take this guy because the range is less important because you can get into the range you want potentially. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's what I would have thought. And the brimstone gun's actually cheaper, funnily enough, than the clatter gun. Yeah, it's cheaper, um, better AP, better strength. Uh, yeah. It doesn't have a arm vein, but I mean, no. AP. I'd take AP two. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, steam gun. Is... Sorry, which is oh the breath weapon. Okay, AP yep. one breath weapon. Yeah. Yeah, strength free. Using your template. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say with this range, of, uh, this unit size, one to six. Um, yeah. oh, they've gone on. That's a bigger base size, isn't it? Uh, yes. I've had to rebase my <laughs> <Damn it>. Jorokov. <laughs> oh, damn it. I have to do that with my uh, one. It's not that I've finished my one, so I, my dwarf army is nowhere near complete. Um, I was just saying, um, you know how people are putting those rules of threes in? It feels like, what's the point, given yeah. this could just still do 18? I mean, you wouldn't fit it in probably. Well, maybe you would. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just interesting. Um, obviously yeah, they're skirmish. They've never been able to be in units before, hey? So this is yeah, the first time. Nah, this yep. is, we'll see how that goes. You might see them in, yeah, little twos and threes. but um, Yeah, so they get a dive bomb, fire and flee, fly nine, um, hatred orcs and goblins. Impact hits D3, which is really good, just mm. to put them into, you know, combat for against war machines and whatnot. You're going to actually be able to maybe take them out, possibly. Uh, Magical Resistance 1, Skirmishes, Swiss Stride, Vanguard. So Vanguard's good for these guys because they can actually move. Um, mm. So Dive Bomb. So yeah, once per game, a unit with a special rule may perform a Dive Bomb attack against a single enemy unit not engaged in combat. So you've got to move over it um, during the remaining sub uh, phase, remaining move sub phase. Once the unit completes its move, the enemy unit suffers D6 Strength 3 attacks with an AP of minus 1 for each model in the unit that moved over it. However... For each roll of a natural one made when determining the number of hits, the bomb has misfired and the unit loses a single wound. So not bad. I mean, it's only, yeah, D6 strength three hits, but I mean, yeah. Um, Jara bombers, so they're coming in with an extra wound. Um, Still got the same attacks. 95 points, so they're a little bit more expensive. Um, They still, again, have full plate armor. Same for the brimstone gun and clatter gun. So it's five points and 10 points respectively. Um, they do the same sort of thing. So bombing run. Um, these guys are close order. Uh, fly eight, so not quite as far. Uh, they got hatred. So impact hits is D3 plus one. So not too bad for impact hits. Um, again, magic resistance one and swift strides. Um, I find it quite strange that they're close order. But anyway, it's just... Um, yeah, just need to be careful with the way that you're moving them. Yeah. Mm, they're going um, way more like, yeah, not, yeah. Yeah, not as. Cre- yeah, okay, monstrous creatures. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not as maneuver. You guys really don't want to go up against Bretonians, do you, with your army, given that all your movement's won for these flyers. So if you get hit yeah. with that falcon horn. Yeah. <laughs> Just this static gun position, just so that's that's like you're not going to see an 18 gyrocopter tournament list because they're going to go up against Britannia and they're oh, going to yeah. have that, and suddenly none of their gyrocopters are going to be able to move. So yeah, you just shake hands, mm. here's my 20 points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the bombing run, um, so yeah, it's the same sort of thing. So you move over a, a, a unit during the re- remaining move sub phase, once the movement is complete, you do a bombing run. So you roll a d6 on a one um it jams and it blows up prematurely so you lose a wound on a two it's a dud so it just goes down and lands on a single enemy the unit just loses a single wound um on a three or four so it's a direct hit so you place the five inch blast template down um scatter at d6 so it's a pretty big template um and on the final position um your risk being suffered uh, strength four with AP minus one hit. Um, five, six, you get cluster of bombs. So there's two three-inch templates. And once again, you scatter them D6. Then anybody underneath um, gets a strength, well, a chance of suffering a strength four hit, sorry, with an AP of minus one. So not <clears> bad, yeah. but yeah. It's just not. We'll see I can go. see why people are doing the gyros instead of the bombers. So Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, bolt throwers coming in at 55 points. I, I won't get into all because they're all generic. Um, yeah, yeah. Good. So yeah, up to 100 points of runes. Grudge thrower, 95 points. So it's just a stone thrower. Um, again, it can take runes up to 100 points. The cannon, so it's not a great cannon, it's just a normal cannon. It's yep. going to cost you 100 points. Engineering runes up to 100 points. Is that D3 wounds or D3 plus one for the great cannon? D3. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not. Yeah, it's pretty pretty average. Um, organ gun, 120 points. So, yeah, it's starting to get a bit expensive. Um, and the flame cannons, 125 points. You don't see that many flame cannons. So, mm. yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um and yeah, that is all she wrote. So, so if you take, so I mean, I guess obviously there's still war machine builds here. It's just whether or not you're going to, how much you're going to sink into the war machines and shooting side of things, you know, given that war machines yeah. probably took a bit of a nerf, but I mean, dwarves can take a lot of war machines and be reliable. Lot, yeah. So uh, I like, yeah, I think bolt throwers, <clears throat> I'd say three, few bolt throwers, maybe a few grudge throwers. Maybe a single cannon. I can't see too many cannons kicking around. Um, maybe an organ gun here and there. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I can't see like too many double cannon lists. Like you're better off, for me, you're better off getting two bolt throwers rather than two cannons. That's just yeah, for me, yeah. my feelings. But, but yeah, we'll yeah, see, well, especially, especially with, with that. The, the BS5 engineer and, and stuff like that, rerolling ones or whatever to hit, uh, whatever it was. Um, and it's yeah, and you get can... almost two of them for the price of one. So, yeah, I think it is twenty odd points, but you can buff it up to strength seven down from six. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'd like to see some mass on effectiveness of cannons, but I think what everyone's doing now is they're just running those little troll hammer torpedo darts. They oh, seem them to too. Be yeah, yep, true. For the same price as a cannon, and you know they they do other things as well, so. Yeah. yeah, you've obviously built a few lists. Like, how quick do you run out of, you know, like if not so much mixed arm, but if you're trying to do like one or two really big combaty, fighty anvils with all your dudes in it, and then you put war machines around it and some gyros, like, are you really struggling to fit it all in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because we just start it's... adding all those runes up. <laughs> well, it's just the dwarf blocks. They just get, you know, obviously, it's like when you've got a, yeah. a combat, a big combat block, they start getting pricey yes. and. You're yeah. sort of, you're trying to get, I think dwarves kind of need that, you know, static combat resolution um, to be effective sometimes because this is where they I hit think, okay. Uh, but, I don't yeah. want to say line hammer is the solution because it's not, but on one hand you sort of go, well, my dwarves are going to die anyway, so why don't I just, and I can only get <clears throat> plus two combat res out of my ranks, so why don't I just drill them into, you know, a line and get more attacks yeah. to try and do do those two wounds back, you know what I mean? Like, Or at least yeah. those two wounds. Um, because then you don't care. But obviously you can't do that across the board because you run out of room. So, um, yeah. But, you know, can you can you go line of hammers, line of long vids, line of... <laughs> so you've got to go through one to get to the next one to get to the yeah, next yeah, one. Yeah. Just layered defense. Uh, like layered defense of lines again. and go, there yeah, you yeah. go, have, have this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Funny. Nah, nah, that's good. Uh, but, right. So you've been like, how are you? Um, how are you liking it overall in terms of compared to what it has been in the past, which was obviously lots of cannons. I don't think I don't know. I was never scared of the the quarrelers and stuff. They never seemed to do a whole lot. But maybe that's just who yeah. I played. But um, you know, they'll definitely sit back and shoot as much as they can. Um, yeah. I think feels... Vanguard's the only thing that I don't like. Everything else is kind of coming similar off to 8th edition. I don't think they're that bad at all. Um, a lot of people are saying Dwarves are OP. I think it just depends. I think every race is OP. depends on what other mm. army it's up against. Like it's. I mean, you definitely um, benefit from that 25% change around points and stuff, though. Yeah. Like, if I haven't yeah. broken you and you're not below... And yeah. you're not fleeing. Like, I haven't killed you. You're not fleeing under 50. Then <laughs> I really need yeah, to yeah. chew through a lot of that thing to get any points out of it. Yeah, yeah, which can take time with dwarves, which is, yeah, one of those things. The only thing you do have a problem with with a gun line, I suppose, is 
you are getting pushed back. And if yeah. you're not, if you are getting pushed back, um, you know, uh, like fall back in good order, you're still fleeing through cannons. So there is a good chance if you are too yes, close to the that's board. That's a really good point. That's you're gonna a really get, good point. Because someone said enough. that today that they yeah. didn't do, like they bumped into someone rather than like when they got, I thought it was Val actually. He said, yeah, he played it wrong in a tournament where he had like Blackhawks or whatever it was, I can't remember, getting pushed back and he had a mage there, Charmin, yeah. and he sort of, they just played it like, oh, I bumped into him because it was just, they didn't, yeah. you don't think of it as a flea, but it's actually a flea, which therefore you should yeah, bump you gotta, past the Charmin. And yeah. you're right, like if you're sitting at the back of the board and your war machines are there. Yeah, if you're castled are, up, yeah. Yeah. It's true. And we never had that in eight, so that was never a thing. Uh, because yeah. you'd have to flee, but now you don't have to flee. That's actually a really interesting point to think about. And not just on dwarves, but even other times when you're sitting at the back there. Um, yeah, 100%. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Mm. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see. Every time I've read dwarves, they always scare me because I just, the amount of, I've had bad history with runes and <laughs> the, Never seem to play an army that uh, can go toe to toe against a dwarf lord. <laughs> so, well, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, they go. They go well. It's just they're they're hard to position, and they they can be like I've had lots of problems where you set up counter charges and you fail them by an inch because you know you're only yeah, moving yeah. three inches, and then you roll, you know, something real really small. You know, yeah, it's like you get you know. A, a two and a one and then all of a sudden you you fail this sort of six inch charge or something and it's just <laughs> you just shake your head you saw yeah so uh, i don't know it's just it's it's one of are these you, things it's getting... are you hoping for um just i know you, i didn't prepare you on this one but when the book comes out and the infamy assuming you get two different lists um is there any types of dwarf lists you're wanting like obviously more like do you reckon they'll do more of a Slayer list, which it's a bit of a shame given that the Slayers don't seem to have the rules you really want. But um, yeah, what do you think they'll do? Yeah, I've, I've heard some rumours like it would be good to see like maybe a different flavour of Dwarfs, like maybe a, there's like an above ground, you know, everyone's always talked about like, oh, the Dwarf Bear Cav and this and that. Mm. I think that would be cool, um, even though I haven't really seen much of it in the law but i mean at the end of the day you can just oh, yeah i don't reckon mm. it yeah. even says in the the i will think it's in this uh at the beginning here talks about how they don't do cavalry because where they live in the mountains you can't have yeah. Them. yeah not conduct yeah, yeah. conducive to cavalry in regards to just can't even ride a horse uh, i don't know I, I don't know if they'll bring out new units in any of the books that aren't already here no. um It'll nah, just be a mix-up, yeah. so it just depends on... I think the Slayers are an obvious one, but I just don't know how else you build a different dwarf-themed list. Yeah, well, it's been done before. I think I think it could be good. Um, hopefully, it'll be one where, like, you, you know, you might have whoever your, your lord or general is going to be imparts better rules upon your Slayers. Um, that yeah, could be yeah, a way yeah. To go. and you could do more um, of an ambushy one that was more miners yeah. and ambushing and something that's a little bit more, I don't know, yeah. moving around. Doesn't have war machines, but you know, pops out of the ground and forests and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Interesting to see. Yeah, uh, but now nah, we'll see, and hopefully, like you said, the dice. We saw the dice going back a, mm. a month or so ago, so hopefully they're not. Yeah, too I mean, far on the pod, I talked about how the releases will work. I. I quietly I'm, I'm hoping we they do them in twos but we'll see because yeah. if they do and we know orcs are coming next maybe we will see dwarves at the same time that'd be cool yeah, it'd be yeah. good to just not get one just because i think it'll drag out but yeah uh, yeah 100% no i won't complain i just want more but, ah, yeah no so good. Oh, cool. Hopefully people, as I said, most of these uh, reviews for us are more of a walkthrough initially and then we'll get some more games in with them and then I'm sure we'll do more list strategy building type ones per per faction as we get better at them, but like know yeah. more about them, but yeah. 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 Cool. I will. And we'll awesome. uh, have a game of dwarfs on the channel coming up pretty soon. Very soon. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Excellent. Thanks Andrew. Thanks everyone right. for listening and um, yeah, like, and subscribe and uh, check out our other reviews if you hadn't done them already. And uh, we'll uh, talk to you on our next video. Will do. All right. Cheers guys.